Hey everyone, thanks for watching. This video will be all about teaching you to use the VLOOKUP function within Google Sheets. I'll show you how to simplify a big set of data like this one into a single line automated report card like this. So let's dig in. Before I get started, I am going to take 7 seconds to ask you to subscribe to my channel and click the bell notification. If you do that, you'll get notified every week when I post a new video. Also, feel free to hit that like button or comment on what you learned. Okay, so here we go. In this sheet, I have a list of 31 made up students and their overall percentage scores in each of the four quarters last year. My goal is to make an automated single student scorecard on this page using the VLOOK function. I want the scores in these four cells to populate based on the name I select in this drop down list. The VLOOKUP function simply defined is a vertical lookup. In other words, it searches down the first column of a range for a key and returns the value of a specified cell in the row found. Let's break it down further than that though. When you enter the VLOOKUP formula, Google Sheets will ask for four criteria. The first criteria will be the search key. When you are looking at the first column of the table, what value do you want the formula to focus on? In our example, the search key would be the name in the drop-down list. That's the name we want to focus on when pulling the scores for the four quarters. The second criteria will be the range to consider for the search. In other words, we'll need to use all of the columns in the table because we're looking at all four quarters, so the range would be the entire table listed here. The third criteria is the index, or the column index number. This is the column number that you want the formula to focus on. So if we want the formula to only look at the scores for the first quarter, then we would put two as the column index number because it's the second column in the table. The fourth and final criteria is a bit tricky. And in most cases, it isn't even needed. It's called is sorted. This basically asks you whether or not the first column in your chart is sorted. Long story short, it asks you if Google Sheets should try to find the most approximate match if they can't find an exact match. Now that we've gone over each criteria in the formula, let's put it to work. Let's set up a formula for the first quarter and then we'll build it from there. Before we start the equation, I'm going to select a name in the dropdown so we have something to build the formula from. Now let's open the formula up by typing equals, the lookup, and opening parentheses. Now I have to select the search key. I'm going to select D11 since I want the numbers to change based on who I select from the dropdown list. Then I'll type a comma to get to the next criteria in our formula. It's now asking me for the range I want to look at. So I'm going to select the entire table on the student information sheet. You'll notice that Google Sheets is smart enough to follow you as you go back and forth on Sheets. So it's collecting the fact that you want to look at cells A1 through E25 on the student information sheet, not the end of year report card sheet. After I select the table, I'll add another comma to get to the next criteria in the formula. Now it's asking me for the index, or the column index number. Since, for this formula, I want to look at the first quarter scores, I'm going to choose the second column in the table. That means I type 2 here. Then add a comma to get to the next criteria. The final piece of the formula is essentially telling Google Sheets if you want it to return an approximate value. I almost always select false here, because I always want it to return in an exact match. You can also just type two quotation marks here as well, which tells Google Sheets you don't even want to use this portion of the formula. Now I just add a closing parenthesis to the formula and hit enter to close it out. You can see now that if I select Joshua Williams from the drop down list, it returns his first quarter score. I can even go back to the table to validate that. The cool thing is now, I don't even need to redo this formula for all four quarters. If I set the parameters correctly, I can just drag the formula all the way across. All I have to do is change two arguments in the formula to be absolute. I can do that by clicking on the search key and hitting F4 to ensure that it always looks at D11 as the search key, and then do the same thing for the range to ensure Google Sheets always looks at the same table. Now I can drag the formula all the way across. Once I do that, I still need to change one thing in each formula. I'll need to change the column index for each formula. So when I look at the second quarter, I'll need to change the column index number to be 3, since I'm looking at the third column. Then change it to 4 in the third quarter cell, since I'm looking at the fourth column. then to 5 in the 4th quarter cell since I'm looking at the 5th column. The last thing I'm going to do is add an average here and we'll be done. Equals average, opening parentheses, cells E11 through H11, 
and closing parentheses. I'm going to bold that just for appearance as well. Now I should be able to change the name in the dropdown and these values will change based on the name selected. The VLOOKUP is as simple as that. I hope you learned something and can now work smarter instead of harder. See you next time. Hey guys, how you doing? If you learned something from this video, you're going to want to do a couple things. First, you're going to want to hit that subscribe button and the bell notification. If you do that, you're going to be the first one to get notified when I post a new video, which is about once a week. I'd also ask that you hit that like button and the share button, and then tell me what you learned in the comment section. If you do all of those things, this video is actually going to get out there for more people to see and to learn from. Thanks guys, I'll see you next time.